In this video, you're going to learn how to find ebooks using EBSCO's ebook database. First, what's the difference between ebooks and print books? Both basically have the same contents, but ebooks are, of course, online, and print books are the physical copy of a book. So, same content, but different formats. When doing research, generally speaking, content is much more important than format. So either an ebook or a physical copy of a book are both good options for when you're doing research. To get to EBSCO eBooks from the library homepage, click on the button for eBooks. Then scroll down until you see EBSCO eBook and click on the link for EBSCO eBooks. If you're off campus, you have to log in with your one login. This is the same username and password you use to get into Canvas. Now we're in the database. From here, you could do a keyword search for a topic you're interested in or for a particular title of a book. I'm going to do a search for this topic. So you can see that we have seven results. You will also get some video results in this database. That's just something EBSCO does. Some of those might be useful if you need videos, but right now we're just focusing on ebooks. So to access a book, you can click on the book's title. This will take us to the book's record page, which gives us information about the title of the book, the authors of the book, the publishing information, and the date that the book was published, as well as some other things. It will also include a short description of what the book is about. You can see our search terms that we typed in are in bold in the book description. Some ebooks, but not all, only allow one user at a time to access the book. This is due to licensing agreements with the publishers and the database providers, but all you really need to know, if you can't access an ebook due to another person using it, try opening it again in an hour or two and you'll probably be able to access it. Whenever you find a resource that you think might be useful, be sure to email a copy of that resource to yourself or at least the link or permalink to that resource. So in this case, when you're using library databases, you do not want to copy and paste this URL up here. Because we use an easy proxy, this URL often won't actually take you back to your results. What you want to do is you can either select permalink down here, and this will give you a link that you can copy and paste and get back to this article. Or what is even easier is select email under tools and you can email often all of a part of the resource to yourself or at least the correct link to the resource along with uh, important information that you can use in your works cited. Like in this case, it'll also email you the MLA citation for this book. So you can just type in your email and it doesn't have to be your school email, it can be any email you want and you can send it to yourself. Notice the subject area. This will be useful for finding other books on the same topic or for coming up with other keywords we can use to find more resources. If you scroll down, you can get to the table of contents. Oftentimes when doing research, you won't have time to read a whole book or multiple books on your topic. So knowing how to pinpoint the section of a book that's going to be most useful for your research is a useful skill to have. It'll help save you time and help you write better research papers. So you can use the table of contents to narrow down a chapter or a couple chapters that will be most useful for your research. So for example, with this book, I might choose just to read chapter two. Another way to pinpoint what you need in a book is to use the index. Most nonfiction books will have an index, not all of them, but most of them will. This one does, so I'm going to go to it. So here's the index for this book. The index is an alphabetical list of the topics covered in a book, and it's usually located at the end of the book. So, for example, if I'm interested in learning more about Oxycontin, I could go to where Oxycontin is in the index and find the pages that are going to be most relevant for my research. Now, if a book doesn't have an index, or if you want another way to pinpoint a useful section in a book, you can also search within an ebook using keywords. To do that, click on the Search Within link in the left-hand window. Now when I type in Oxycontin, I can find the pages that have that keyword, and I can click on those pages to get to them. 
Other things to keep in mind, once you've opened an ebook, you can email pages of the ebook to yourself. As I said before, whenever you find a resource that you think might be useful, you always want to email it to yourself. For ebooks, you usually won't be able to email the entire ebook to yourself, but you can usually email a couple of pages. How many pages is going to depend on the licensing rights with the publisher. This one looks like it has a very high page limit. But you can also just email the section to yourself if you want. To review, ebooks typically have the same content as print books but are in a digital format. Use the table of contents, index, and search function to pinpoint the parts of the book you need. Email the record or pages of the book to yourself if you think it might be useful. Databases provide citations for your resources.